Ever wondered how the outside of Kronos was made? This is the evolution of the sculpting and finishing journey of Kronos 1 through 3. Kronos first started with a simple sketch, the blueprint of potential. As a non-professional artist, I brought Kronos to life, shaping clay with my own hands. Through the power of Google and a small grant through Georgia Southern University, I acquired what I believed were all the materials necessary to craft my creature. This particular clay is called monster clay. It's a premium oil-based clay that softens nicely with a hairdryer. Once the clay sculpture was complete, it was time to sacrifice it to the mold. The mold would hold on to the memories of the sculpt so that it could be reborn in latex. For the mold, I utilize UltraCal gypsum cement and for the separating walls, a water-based clay that would not stick to the cement or the monster clay. I'm sure many professionals are squirming at the sight of my molds. Once the molds were finished, I cast the body parts with Monster Maker's RD407 latex. And after my pieces were together, I painted with a latex-based paint to match the colors of my original drawing. I never finished the wings because it was time to work on the next iteration. With Kronos 2, I had a little more experience. First, I wanted to give Kronos a little more of a natural pose. I collaborated with an art student, Justin Hinckley, and he jumped in and brought fresh eyes and hands to the project, elevating the sculpt and look to a new level. Document this as we had to fix him because Brian broke him. For the mold, since there are many undercuts, I sought a new process utilizing a soft silicone jacket and a harder mother mold. The orange stuff is the silicone. This looks terrifying. The rigid mold was made of freeform air by SmoothOn. What I didn't realize was we didn't have near enough material, but we made do with what we had and clamored together a janky looking mold to keep shape. Our resources were scarce. Tape was our ally. Once the mold was together, it was time for casting. This time, I opted for a two-part expanding foam. The two parts were mixed together and poured into the mold, and after seconds, the foam expanded to fill the void. Excess foam and fabric was cut to make pieces for the wings. Everyone always asks about the eyes. These came from Amazon. And finally, I spray painted the dragon with an airbrush kit. With Kronos 3, I now had some professional experience. I knew it was time to take Kronos' sculpt digital. My colleague, Aaron Wirt stepped in and wielding technology as his chisel, he took the 3D scan of Kronos 2 and re-sculpted him in ZBrush, refining and elevating Kronos to a professional standard. No molds, I could print all the shells out of PLA and nylon. Kronos 3 is not yet finished. I've just wiped off the dust and started working on him again. Excited to share more in future updates.